We're going to talk about meditation today. Someone writes in and says, be careful, meditation is very cultic. Is it? We're going to talk about that today on Pastor Bob's Coffee Break. There's my mug for today. I am the pastor your pastor warned you about. <laughs> there you go. There's an old mug. Collector's item, I guess, at this point, huh? There you go. So, I'd like to know where you're from. You know, I'm getting all kinds of requests for our Who Am I poster, and I'll talk about that in a minute. And uh, they come from all over the world in places I never would have guessed. And I love the fact that this podcast is so international. I think at one point with my pastor, Bob Daly, I counted 120 countries or more, actually, that had uh, written in, that had been involved with it. And this one's reaching out as well. You know, our numbers are going down this week. I'm wondering why that is. Um I'd love your suggestions. Is this a little too long for you? You know, that could be one of the things. Is it, uh, am I too boring? There you go. <laughs> but what might be the, the problems or the solutions? And if you, uh, if you have some ideas or some suggestions, I'd love to hear them. And I'd especially love to hear where you're from. Just write it down below. I'm from, or just put the name of the city the country, and i uh, love to know where you're from. So, the Who Am I posters. This is it. You know, it, it talks about who I am in Christ, and you know we talk about this all the time, because it's the foundation of who we are and the foundation of, of how we operate as a Christian. And who you are will determine, you know, almost everything you do in your life knowing who you are. So um, anyway, I, I talked about this at the end of my podcast yesterday, which was a very long podcast. And I looked at all the statistics and most people didn't listen all the way to the end. So, um, so you didn't get this information, but I, I, I simply printed this on regular paper and black and white. Uh, so that it could be duplicated easily. And um, so you could read it. I started out by doing it in something smaller with color and all of that. And I thought with this one, I'm just going to do this. If you'd like to have this, just let me know. Pastor Bob Beeman at gmail.com. There's the address right there. And uh, it's also written down below. If you'd like one, ask and I will send you the digital version of it, the PDF. If you don't have a printer and you live in the United States, I'd be glad to send one to you. If you live internationally, find somebody with a printer that can print it out for you. A little too expensive to send a sheet of paper overseas. And in the future, we'll have a lot more things like this, probably half the size. And I want to start uh, giving you little mini posters of all the little Pastor Bobisms <laughs> that we talk about, but the things that are important for you to remember in your uh, walk with the Lord. Well, is meditation cultic? I got these two questions. One, dear Pastor Bob, I like how you said that meditation isn't something that should be pushed. It would be nice to hear you expound on this one point. And uh, that was just a little bit out of context, but I'd be glad to talk about it. And then Jeff from Twitter says, uh, be careful when you talk about meditation. It's very cultic. So let's begin. You know, a lot of people use meditation in a lot of different ways. And I need to start out by saying that I'm not an expert at meditation outside of the Christian faith. Let me just say that. And there are people that have great concerns about, you know, meditation that finds its way into the, the transcendental, the, the, um, 
you know, the other religions and all of that, and I get that. But the Bible talks about medica meditation in a little different way, and, and, and I think there's an important distinction. You see, it isn't about meditation for meditation's sake. As a Christian, there is an object of our meditation. There's an object of our faith. You know, sometimes people say, well, just have faith. And how do you do that? How do you just have faith? And a lot of people, even in Christian circles, teach you to have faith in your faith. Just name it and believe it and have faith in your faith, really? You know, Jesus is the object of our faith. If he isn't the object of your faith, then your faith isn't going very far because there's nothing to base it on. And that's true with meditation. Jesus is the object of our meditation. You know, <clears throat> Psalm 49.3 in the Amplified Bible says, my mouth will speak wisdom and the meditation of my heart will be understanding. What does that mean exactly? A good friend of mine, Simon, taught um, uh, English in uh, China for a while. And uh, he's from Denmark. Did you get all that? <laughs> a Dane teaching English in China. Okay. And he said that they memorized the English very well. They could recite it real easily, but they memorized how it sounded. And if you asked them a question that was outside of what they memorized, they had no idea what you were talking about. Now they had it memorized okay, but they didn't know what it meant. And the same thing really is true with scripture. You could memorize scripture and still not know it. Really? You see, memorization is what we do in our head. Meditation is what we do in our hearts. And the Bible talks about this transference from, well, head knowledge to heart wisdom. And that's a really important transfer, the one from here to here. So let's talk about that transfer today. And here's the fixin' verse. You know, in Tennessee, people talk about fixin'. I'm fixin' to leave. I'm fixin' to get dressed. I'm fixin' to take a shower. I'm, you know, fixin'. It's a fixin' verse. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true, what is honorable, what is right, what is pure, lovely, admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. This is a foundation for meditation. Are you getting kind of a, an idea here? So he's saying, fix your eyes, fix your eyes, fix your thoughts on what is true, what is honorable, what is right, what is pure, your thoughts. In other words, you're thinking about these things. And thinking about them actually is called meditation. Now, how often are we supposed to meditate? Well, Psalm 1, 2 says, but they delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. We're supposed to think of it often. Psalm 119, 15 from the Amplified Bible says, I will meditate on your precepts and have respect to your ways, the paths of life marked out by your law. I'll meditate on them. Well, then the psalmist in Psalm 19, 14 says, May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Aren't those great scriptures? But you, you kind of see the process here. It's taking the word, meditating on it, and meditating on it, it becomes part of who you are. I will hide your word in my heart that I might not sin against you, the Bible says. 
hiding them in your heart, your heart. So I would guess that a whole lot of Christians simply have this. Memorize scriptures, maybe. They've heard a thousand sermons. I remember one time I was talking to an older woman who was asked to teach Sunday school, and she had been in the church since she was a little child, every single Sunday. Heard thousands of sermons, thousands of teachings. Read the Bible tons of times. And when they asked her to teach Sunday school, she says, I don't know what I would say. Really? But I have a feeling that a lot of people kind of feel that way. We don't take it from here to here. And if it just stays right there, well, yeah, we would have problems with what to say. How do I sort that? How do I make that relevant? Because it really isn't that relevant to us. But when it goes from here to here, the meditation of my heart, when I know it, when I apply it, when I feel it, when the Holy Spirit quickens it to me, well, that's a whole different thing, isn't it? And that's when it becomes powerful. And that's when it becomes vibrant in our lives. And, you know, that's the whole thing. I have three quotes I want to give you before we're done today. One of them is from my mentor, Chuck Swindoll. Um, and it says, in place of our exhaustion and spiritual fatigue, God will give us rest. All he asks is that we come to him, that we spend a while thinking about him, meditating on him, talking to him, listening in silence, occupying ourselves with him, totally and thoroughly lost in the hiding place of his presence. Isn't that a great quote? I'm going to put the quote down below. I, I want you to have that. But, um, you know, I think in one of the cool things about ministry is, is uh, that even through the hustle and bustle of everything, there is this place to go and be recharged. Here's a quote from Watchman Nee. He says, take this as the secret of Christ's life in you. His spirit dwells in your innermost spirit. We've talked about that a lot of times. Meditate on it. Believe in it. And remember it until this glorious truth produces within you a holy fear and wonderment that the Holy Spirit indeed abides in you. He says, meditate on it. Believe it. Remember it. Let it produce that thing in you that becomes a foundation. And one last quote is from Charles Spurgeon, another one of my favorites. He says, the more you read the Bible and the more you meditate on it, the more you will be astonished with it. <laughs> that is absolutely the case. Are you having trouble getting into the Bible? Well, this could be one of the reasons. You know, we don't just need to digest the Bible. We don't just need to read it and say, well, that was nice. But he says, be astonished by it. I'm going to read that quote one more time. The more you read the Bible, the more you meditate on it, the more you will be astonished with it. I hope you're astonished. And I hope you'll take some of these very simple keys to meditation and remember that it's really fixing, fixing your eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of your faith. And when you fix your eyes on him and you meditate on his precepts and you hide the word not here, here in your heart, something begins to happen. You will change. It's meditation cultic. I'm sure it could be, depending on what you're meditating on. But if Jesus is the focus, and if you're meditating on his word, it only is for your benefit. There you go. Well, you are blessed. So go and be a blessing.